If you look at the night sky, you can't help but be fascinated. Billions of stars are up there, shining for so long that the ones we see today were seen thousands of years ago by ancient people. Every once in a while, a meteorite made from this space material races across the sky as a ball of fire, and sometimes they hit the Earth. Scientists say that a very large one, or many hitting at the same time, killed the dinosaurs. The impact was so massive that a dust cloud blocked the sun, killing all the vegetation and starting a vicious cycle of death. You can visit some of these craters in the United States, such as the Behringer Crater in Arizona. It's nearly three quarters of a mile across and 560 feet deep, the largest known impact crater in America. Scientists estimate that a meteorite, about 160 feet across, did this some 50,000 years ago. The biggest fragment found of this one is only two and a half feet across. Being rare, they are very valuable, precious finds. Ancient people thought that meteors were sent by the gods and believed they had deep religious meaning. The Egyptian King Tutankhamun had a royal dagger made from a meteorite. Coming from the heavens, it was thought to have magical properties. But sometimes, these space rocks contain something even more exciting than that. They can contain diamonds made from superheated carbon. In fact, the Enigma Black Diamond formed by a meteorite is over 555 carats. It's the largest black diamond on Earth. In July of 2023, it was sold for an astounding $4.3 million. So if you see a meteor and find where it hit the ground, it could make you immensely wealthy. Definitely worth a walk in the woods. And a little over 120 years ago, one was said to hit the area now known as Santa Claus, Indiana. As you might imagine, it was a huge sensation. And does it ever have a strange backstory? As you approach the Santa Claus, Indiana city limits, you're greeted by a Santa Claus statue. It's the only town in America named Santa Claus, and there's a good reason for that. The U.S. Postal Service refused to grant any more towns a post office with that name. Consider the logistical nightmare of routing millions of children's letters addressed to Santa from all over the world. It's bad enough to send them all to one town, let alone figure out which Santa Claus town they should go to. There are various stories about how the town was named Santa Claus in the first place, but the most popular goes like this. In 1856, well before the Civil War, the town was named Santa Fe, but there was a problem. When the town applied for a U.S. post office, they were denied as there was already a Santa Fe, Indiana, northeast of Kokomo. As the story goes, a town meeting was called, some brainstorming went on, then someone blurted out, how about Santa Claus? As it turned out, there was not a single town in America named Santa Claus. And as they say, the rest is history. A post office charter was granted, and to add to the mythology, the first postmaster of Santa Claus, Indiana, his first name was... Nicholas. As in St. Nicholas. I am not making this stuff up. In fact, Santa Claus, Indiana has been featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not. So the town got its post office and a great story for the ages. But that was only a primer 
for an even stranger set of events involving a meteorite right next to it. When you come to Santa Claus, Indiana today, you'll find a town that has absolutely embraced the Christmas spirit. More than just a giant Christmas store in the center of town, Santa is everywhere you look. There's Town Hall Santa, Firefighter Santa, Beach Bum Santa. The list goes on and on with all kinds of Christmas related places and street names. But it wasn't always this happy, Merry Christmas and Peace on Earth place that it is today. It all started when several business people wanted to cash in on the Santa Claus town name, and things got ugly quick. In fact, someone was destined to get their name on Santa's naughty list. Milton Harris and the town's postmaster, James Martin, wanted to start a Santa Claus village. In 1935, they built Santa's Candy Castle with very big plans. Stocked with all kinds of candy, they also made a toy factory called Santa's Workshop and Toy Village. They drew up plans for a train depot, a place for the boys to shoot daisy air rifles, and an entertainment pavilion. But another businessman named Carl Barrett, wanted his own Christmas village and to shut Milton and James completely down. He started by buying the ground that they'd leased, becoming their landlord. And keeping with the Christmas spirit, launched a series of lawsuits that went back and forth for years. On the same day that they opened the Candy Castle, Carl unveiled a gigantic Santa statue, 40 tons and 22 feet tall. It was ginormous. So there were two attractions across the highway from one another, both equally compelling. But Carl had something that Milton didn't, a Christmas miracle. Next to the Santa statue was a crater that Carl said was made by a meteor seemingly blessing the attraction by divine providence. People that flocked to the area found all kinds of metal scattered in this big ditch. It was pretty compelling. Perhaps it really was a true Christmas miracle. At a very minimum, it was very cool, and many people that heard about it came to Santa Claus, Indiana just to check it out. As Walt Disney would say, they made a wish upon a star. For some people, it took on a sincere religious meaning, giving them hope. And eventually, the Christmas Wars did end. Carl and Milton's lawsuits made it all the way to the Indiana Supreme Court, with both trying to come out on top. Though Carl's big win came in the form of an oil deposit found on the property he owned. He created the Rush Creek Oil Company and lived out the rest of his life in Evansville, managing the company and living a comfortable existence. He abandoned both the huge statue and his plans for a Christmas monopoly. Milton continued with the Candy Castle, and it still operates to this day. But Santa's workshop is now in ruins. As are the other outbuildings and the big plans he had. Lewis Cook would eventually open Santa Claus Land just down the road, the first theme park in America. It later turned into Holiday World, the only theme park in southern Indiana. It has some of the top rated coasters in America. The biggest water park in the Midwest. Not to mention free soft drinks all day.
but it all started with a town named Santa Claus, two men fighting to control the Christmas industry, and one meteor crashing into the Indiana countryside. Or did it really? Many have confirmed, including the founder of Santa Claus Land itself, that a meteor did in fact hit the town, exactly where Carl Barrett said it did. But others say Carl Barrett was in the same territory as P.T. Barnum and a very big storyteller. The statue that he claimed to be made of solid granite was actually only concrete. After some time, it began to crack and expose the truth. Some have said that Carl Barrett had pieces of scrap metal thrown into a dugout crater to create his Christmas miracle. The truth is not crystal clear. However, there is a crater. If you're looking for a sign, here it is, at the Santa Claus Museum and Village. On the path leading up to Carl's statue, on the right side. You're welcome to take a look for a space rock that's 100 million years old. Or a diamond sent from across the universe that will make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. But if there were either, they've likely been scooped up in the 120 plus years since it happened. We call these things legends as we don't have enough facts to say one way or another. We could forget about them, or remember them for the history, intrigue, and inspiration that they've provided. It all adds to the story and richness of this thing we call Southern Indiana.